Hey guys, what's up? Uh, today I thought I would do a different style video, more of like a vlog. So I'm out here at a local park. I got some equipment I'm wanting to test. I recently got into Raspberry Pi, Linux, uh, kind of open source software, stuff like that. I'm trying to migrate away from Windows and kind of that closed source nature of things. I'm trying to expand my knowledge on um, coding and Linux and stuff like that, because that's kind of where some of the more advanced stuff starts to come in. Um, but today, as you can see, I just have a Pelican case here. This is from work. It's This is a work in progress. So like I said, we're just gonna be out here testing um, and seeing if everything kind of works. So I got a little bit going on here. Um, it's it's messy um, and nothing's like hard mounted in the case, right? It's just, it's just in here. So, but um, today this is kind of my comms kit all in one here. So I got like a Baofeng radio, my SDR, everything in here. Really looking forward to testing today is my Raspberry Pi 5. Now this is a eight gigabyte model. And if you don't know what this is, it's really just a tiny computer, okay? You can plug HDMI into it and a keyboard and it works just like a computer. But it's running Ubuntu 24, which is a Linux operating system. So instead of Windows or something like that, it's running Linux. Also have SDR software on here as well as JSA call software. So today I'm gonna see if I can't get this set up, run it off grid utilizing just an anchor external battery pack like a portable charger kind of thing with that and then i also have a little hdmi screen this was like 30 bucks on amazon and you literally just plug it up with an hdmi and i got a computer in my bag i'm gonna see if we can't decode some jsa call messages off of this thing um like i said this pelican case is a it's just a box right now but eventually uh, i want to kind of mount everything in here mount the battery pack mount my mesh tastic device right here external antenna all that stuff get it set up nice and good looking but i just want to make sure everything works first um the only other thing i have out here like i said i have this my comms kit my anchor battery supply i also have this mesh tastic device okay so i'm gonna have that set up I've, I've been running that on my phone for a while now it's cool if you don't know what mesh tastic is there's a million videos and then the only other thing i have in here is a little compass just because we might do some direction finding maybe and uh my field notes all right so see if we can't decode some jsa call messages all right so i'll kind of show you how i set everything up really if you're not familiar with raspberry pi like i said it's a little small computer so i got my computer and my battery bank and then just a usb a simple usb c to usb c cable and that's just going to be my power so plug that guy in here and plug in my power to my battery bank. Turn it on, boom. And then I have a little green light here. I don't know if you can see that, but indicating to me that it's on. Okay, so there's my power. Keyboard, super simple. All right, just plug it in USB. And then same thing for my HDMI display. I'll bring you around to the backside so you can actually see what I'm doing. But this just hooks up via um, HDMI. I got a little small one foot HDMI cable. And the Raspberry Pi, if you don't know, it takes HDMI micro or mini or something. So it's HDMI regular to HDMI micro. And I just plug that dude right in like this. Boom. And you can't see it now, but my screen is up and running. So I'll bring it around to the backside and we'll get started. All right, so as you can see, we're up and running here off grid, off, uh, off this battery pack here. And it's literally just a regular computer, okay? so. Um, there's obviously a lot of programming you got to do to get it started here. So the first thing we're going to do is fire up our SDR software. So I'll type in SDR PP. And that'll run, okay? So <clears throat> we have our SDR software up and running. And then I obviously have pre-installed JSA call. So I'll click on that. JSA call, it'll come up here. We go. Okay, so if you're a ham radio guy, you're probably familiar with what this looks like. Obviously, this is not my call sign. I'm not KM4ACK. He's another guy on YouTube, but... You don't, uh, you have to put in your ham license to be able to, or ham call sign, that is, in order to use this software. So I just put one in because we're just receiving only. All right, we're not transmitting today. Okay, this might be getting a little technical, but just so you know um, what's going on here. Our SDR software is what's going to be gathering the waves and decoding them. And then we will pipe that into JSA call, which will further decode those signals into text that we can read. So the way that we get our 
audio from this program, SDR++, into JS8 Call is a program called uh, PavU, I believe. I have the commands written down here. Um, so this is just a Linux uh, software. So I'll just copy this, paste it into my terminal. And all that does is runs a program um, volume control, essentially is what it is. Now, in this within this program, we're going to make an audio cable, a virtual audio cable. So it's this computer is essentially going to think that we're plugging one cable into SDR++ and another cable into JSA Call, so we can pipe that audio from one software to another. Okay, so now that we're in here, I have this command written down here because I'm not ha hacking the matrix. Copy that, and then I will paste that into my terminal up here. Sorry, I'm not like the best Linux guy, obviously. We'll go in here to the terminal and then paste. It's either here or I have to do it in another. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> I will go in here and I will paste this into here. Paste, boom, press enter. All right, so now it says command not found, but now when we go back in here to pulse audio volume control, um, we'll be able to see uh, that we have a um, audio cable right here. So monitor a virtual audio cable. All right, enough of the technical stuff. We'll actually get into setting up our SDR. All right, so this is just balancing here. That kind of works pretty good. So in my kit here, in this front zipper, I have self-contained my SDR. I hope that focuses. But this is a software-defined radio, just a giant antenna pretty much is the way you can think about it. I'm high speed, so I'll put these B and C connectors on here for um, quick attachment of different antennas. So literally, I just take my SDR, I'm gonna plug it into my Raspberry Pi. Boom, that's in there. I'll probably have to restart SDR++ to make sure it recognizes it. No problem at all. Come back in here to terminal, and then SDR++, run it. And then it should recognize, yep, there we go, RTL SDR, if you can see that, and then there's the actual um, SDR, so the software recognized it. Now, I'm simply going to take my some coax cable here. I got a lot going on, I know, but this is a coax cable. So we'll run that out in the field. This will just clip on, essentially like this. Boom, that clicks in there. I will screw these two together here. Okay, so now this, I know this is a huge mess, right? We're just in the t &E phase of this operation. This is not permanent by any chance, okay? And then I can take my antennas that I keep also in this bag and take these and screw these in to here. If you're familiar with RTL SDR or you've watched any other videos, you've probably seen all this before. So this one goes here. This one goes here. As I get super weird looks from people walking their dogs, like, what is this guy doing? All right, and these, these extend. All right, so we'll be able to, uh, this will be our antenna, obviously, to decode these signals. Ooh, I got this tripod, and this dude just screws into here. Let's see if I can do this on camera here. This guy will simply screw into here. You get the point. And then we'll go set this out in the field. All right, if you ever want to get really weird looks, come out and do shit like this out in public, all right? But, uh, Everyone here is looking at me super weird, but I don't care. Anyways, we're gonna just set this out. We got a little overhead cover, but my coax cable isn't that long, so we shouldn't need it for JSA calls. Pretty good about picking up stuff in the noise. I just don't want these actually touching the ground here. So we'll take my tripod, just lay this out on the ground here, make sure we're fully extended on both sides. All right, now for our moment of truth here. Let's see if this software is gonna work. So I'll just click play here. Boom. Uh-oh, did it crash? No, it didn't. All right, so as you can see, we got signals coming in. A lot of this is probably interference from the Raspberry Pi. So this guy here, this guy here. Um, if uh, Pis are really bad about uh, interference, there's things you can do and countermeasures you can take. And I'll get into that too once I um, kind of R&D this a little bit more. But I'll also move this battery pack away from the SDR itself to keep uh, some interference down on that front. All right, so now that we're here, we're going to go to our JS8 call frequency that I've already saved. So the general frequency for JS8 call on 40 meters is 
0.078. All right, so that's gonna be our GS8 call frequency. So I'll double click that. We're on it. And then we need to make sure we're on upper sideband, which is USB. And so I'll go to USB. And then for the SDR plus plus and this RTL SDR, you wanna make sure you are on direct sampling it needs to be Q branch. Okay, so without getting too nitty gritty nerdy, um, that's just kind of what you need to do on for uh, JSA call in this setup. Okay, so now we have audio coming in our SDR to the Pi. We're going to change the um, output to virtual cable, so it already is here. So like we said, we're going from this software into JSA call. So our input is audio from the SDR and our output is virtual cable. All right, and that virtual cable is piping the audio to JSA call. So here we come into file, settings. Uh, it should be under audio. And then the input needs to be, um, <coughs> input needs to be, it's not on here. All right, let me do some troubleshooting. I'll get right back to you. Okay, after a little troubleshooting, um, all I had to do was come in here to this program, Pulse Audio, and adjust some stuff and then reset uh, or restart JS8 call and then it recognized our input. So now if we come here into settings, audio, virtual cable monitor. So we're listening, we're monitoring that virtual cable and the virtual cable output once again is this SDR program here. All right, so now we should just wait here and we should start, um, if everything is up to par, we should start receiving some JSA call messages. Okay, one other thing I kind of forgot to mention is today is not October 10th, or sorry, today is October 10th. It's not October 8th. If you saw in the clip before, this up here was October 8th. Now, um, JSA call works off of time, so your time has to be super accurate with the computers to be able to decode properly. All right, so I, I really just I put a hotspot on my phone here, connected that hotspot um, to my computer. The time immediately syncs, so now, it is October 10th, 1437, and that is that is the correct time. All right, as you can see here, we got a message that just came in. It's a little scrambled. So this is a problem that I'm running into. Um, we got obviously the offset, so that's ex essentially the frequency that's coming in on. We have the age and then the S and R, which is signal to noise ratio. And it's negative 18, so it's pretty deep in there and you can't see any of the, of the lines coming down because normally you'd be able to see on the waterfall the lines here so the message is scrambled right as you can see snr question mark tac 29 the call sign is kind of weird um so it says hearing and this is the call sign and we'll look this call sign up and see if it's a real call sign but i think that i'm there's something off with the time maybe or with the baud rate or something on the computer and it's not decoding properly so let me Google this call sign, and if it's not real, I'll see if we can't troubleshoot some more stuff. All right, as you can see, we got another message here. Same thing. So we got the offset, the age, and the SNR, um, but the message comes in all scrambled. So <laughs> this is honestly above my um, above my knowledge level on why it's doing that. So if there's some Linux guys out there, ham radio nerds out there, who know what's going on, uh, please let me know, and we can. See if we can't figure this out and, and get it set right here. But now let's go into SDR++, get away from JS8 call, and just scroll around and see what frequencies we can find in uh, SDR++. Well, we can jump up here, just so you know it's working, we'll like, jump up in FM broadcast here. Um, and you can see, I mean, we're, we're here, like this is a radio station, right? Here, that's our radio station coming in. Uh, I don't have the external speaker hooked up because we're just doing digital modes today. But if you did, you'd be able to hear this like if you're listening to your car. Getting all these different programs to work with JSA Call, or sorry, with Linux, is it's a little difficult, um, especially if you don't know what you're doing. All right, guys, one of the things I wanted to show you is, obviously this is my Mesh Tastic device. If you're not familiar with this, look up some uh, videos. But this operates in the 915 megahertz band, and it puts out little data packages, okay? So we're, we're kind of, we're at 914 right now. We'll just wait a minute. And you will see this thing. Um, there it goes, right there, boom. So I'll stop this here. And as you can see, you 
get you off tripod here. So as you can see, I've, I've paused it. But that little blip right there, that's gonna be our, what our, your mesh tastic looks like on the uh, SDR program. So we can wait here another second here. Boom, there it is again. So as you're sending out these data packages on your SDR program, even if someone is looking for you and trying to um, you know, direction find you or something like that, what they're looking for is um, so small and so infrequent, especially if you're moving. Let me pause this here. Especially if you're moving around, you're not stationary. Like that is the signal that they're looking for um, to find you. All right, guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. If you made it this far, um, I'm kind of trying to do different things on my channel. The last video was kind of like a rant video. Um, this video is obviously like a kind of a vlog, just testing different things out. Um, so tell me what you think. Um, I'm just trying to put out good educational content that means something and is not just kind of doing stuff for views or for ad money, I guess is what I'm doing. But um, this is a little t &E video. Once I get all the kinks worked out on this stuff, I'm definitely gonna hard mount it into my case and then I can have like a little portable offline, off-grid um, SDR GS8 call decoder, I guess. And maybe I'll, I'll eventually throw a little, one of the true SDX radios, which is a small HF radio, then I can transmit and receive um, GSA call messages and try to self-contain it in one little box like this. So if you guys know why those GSA call messages were coming in scrambled or not decoded properly, um, let me know. Shoot me a DM, I guess, if you can do that on YouTube or uh, comment and um, see if we can't figure this out together. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. And as always, I hope this helps.